Minecraft YouTubers will make something that looks like this and call it a starter base. Meanwhile, your base looks like this. Hey there, my name is Casey Dreamer. Today I will show you how to make starter bases that are not only easy to build, but also look amazing. I start by opening up a random seed. This world turns out to be a savanna biome. I have a look around and see what blocks are nearby. I make sure to stay close to spawn and only gather resources that are easy to collect nearby. In this world specifically, I was able to find acacia wood, oak wood, diorite, stone, and gravel. I always collect gravel if I can because it is incredibly useful and can be used for a lot of different things. If you can find the iron for it, build shears. Shears can be incredibly useful for getting wool for a bed, but they can also be used for decorations. Wool can be used for banners and carpets, while you can use shears to collect grass, leaves, and vines. Vines can be used as decoration or to make mossy cobblestone. Picking a location. Once you have your materials and you've had a look around, start thinking about where you want to put your base. Look for interesting terrain and structures and ask yourself what story you want to tell with your base. Who are you in this world? Are you an adventurer settling down after many years in the wilds? A farmer living the simple life? A leader of a village or tribe presiding over their people? Or a trader that travels the world collecting riches? In this world, I noticed there was a village and a pillager outpost nearby. I decided my story was that I was a lonely sentry living in a watchtower on a hill with a clear view of the pillager outpost, the village, and the sea. Keep it small. Now it's time to start building. While some people may make massive builds and call them starter houses, our goal here is to make this easy and accessible for everyone, so it's important to keep it small. The larger a build is, the longer it takes to collect resources, so keeping it small helps cut back on resource gathering times. I collected and used about one to two stacks of each of the resources I gathered using only stone tools. You may need to go out and collect a bit more halfway through, but because everything is right there, that shouldn't be too hard. Now we know to keep it small, but how do you actually make the base look good? There are three building tips I have to making small, simple builds look good. Contrast, details, and texturing. Contrast. Contrast is making sure that you are using blocks that have some visual variation. In this build, I use the diorite as a foundation, which is a very white block, and then the second floor is made of gray stone to provide contrast. I use the bright orange acacia as a roof color for the same reason, while the floor and roof pillars are made of oak to keep them from looking the same as the roof. Texturing. The second thing is texturing. Even though we only have five different blocks to choose from, there are several variations of those blocks to use. Diorite can be crafted into polished diorite. Stone comes in cobble, smooth stone, stone bricks, and even cracked bricks and mossy bricks if you can easily get your hands on some of the vines and moss. The different wood types can come in log forms, stripped logs, and planks. I use the acacia logs as pillars to support the second floor because I think the gray bark looks very good next to the stone. On top of all of this, these blocks also come in stair, wall, and slab form. These can be used to add more depth variation and texture. Using these different types of blocks, you can create gradients or break up a wall with some variation in texture. Detail. Lastly, there is detailing. Using a large variation of decorative blocks to tell the story of your world. Paths are a big part of world building and can be a quick and easy way to add detail to your build. Ask yourself what kind of path would this person have? Would it be a little dirt path or a proper cobblestone road? Are there fences lining it or piles of stone and bushes? or well-kept garden plots next to a tree? Where would your character be walking most often, and where would a path have naturally formed? I use a shovel to mark where I want the path to go, and then use a variation of blocks to make a textured path. Gravel is very useful for this. You can also craft coarse dirt with gravel and dirt. Cobblestone, gravel, stone, mossy cobble, coarse dirt, path blocks, or even dripstone and granite can make some really good block to texture a path with. Get creative and try some stuff out. Add in whatever you have to hand. Sometimes even wood can be a good path block, so don't be afraid to experiment. The other thing you need to do is decorate the interior and the land around your house. You can add flowers, bushes, or like I did here, a pile of some kind of crop outside the house. Fences or trapdoors on the windows or as shutters can look good too. Blocks like signs can be useful for adding details. Trapdoors and slabs can be used as shelves to put chests and barrels on. I always like to hide extra storage under the bed. Carpet blocks, wool, moss, bamboo, or bundles of wheat can be used to make a carpet. If you have the iron for a lantern, feel free to add it, but if not, torches will do just fine. If you have easy access to clay, you could make a pot and put a flower or a sapling in it to add a bit of detail. 
maybe on the windowsill, by the front door, or on a shelf. If you don't have a pot, you can make a makeshift pot by putting trap doors around a block of dirt. I added wheat here, but you could put some leaves on a fence to make a mini tree, a sapling with a trap door, or a sign on the wall above it to make sure it doesn't grow, or a flower or berry bush. Make sure to include enough storage in basic necessity blocks, like a crafting table and furnace. This is a survival base, after all. I was able to get a bell from a nearby village and put that on the top of the tower. Repurposing blocks from naturally spawned structures is an easy way to get more interesting blocks early on. So here we have it, my easy to make starter house. This was just what I came up with, but these tips can be applied to any world. Would you guys be interested in me making more examples of starter houses like this on different seeds? Let me know down in the comments and share with me your own starter build stories. Are you a dirt house veteran or do you tend to overdo it when it comes to your first house? Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If this was helpful, please consider subscribing and leave a like and comment down below what you thought. And until next time, don't forget to just keep dreaming. Bye!